three minutes. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Hey, everyone, welcome. Uh, quick announcement. Uh, if you are on the workshop Wi-Fi network and you're not in that workshop, could you please try to get off that network? Uh, they're having some trouble connecting. Thank you. Does, does anybody need the password for the homeroom Wi-Fi? Okay. Word cap, with a capital W, up with a capital U, dash 2019. So word up 2019, word is capitalized, up's capitalized, dash 2019. And, and if you need to refer back to it, it's on the homepage of the, of the website as well. Can you hear me? Hey, this works. All right, so uh, we are gonna be talking about technical SEO for e-commerce and large WordPress. Uh, Art Enke is a digital marketing professional with substantial in-house and agency SEO experience. Art has led multiple SEO teams and works directly with Fortune 500 brands and high growth accounts. He grew writersdigest.com, a WordPress site for the writing community, by a factor of 400% in less than six months, and is passionate about sharing technical insights in a post-Panda Penguin world. He has helped dozens of additional companies grow exponential gr traffic through organic traffic channels through both on-page and off-page SEO strategies. He's a contributor for the Moz Search Engine Ranking Factors Survey and is currently the SEO manager at Big Yam, the Parsons Agency. Thanks a lot. Well, I want to meet that Art Enki guy. He sounds like a pretty cool dude. Uh, that sounds like that's, the intro is just way too formal for me. I, I hope uh, you guys are comfortable today. I, most, of my, most people that I work with, I get to sit around and uh, a table. You guys are welcome to come forward if you want. No pressure, though. Uh, I know a lot of us here have full-time jobs, and we're doing our side gig, trying to make money. Uh, just by raise of hands, how many of you fit that category? You got you're doing WordPress, doing an e-commerce site, trying to make money on the side, trying to like replace your income. Does that, does that sound like anybody here? Good. How many people here are uh, uh, in the category of like working with clients, trying to trying to do SEO for clients or build websites for clients? 
most of us here. Okay, cool. Uh, great to hear. Any developers? Lots of developers. Great. We've got a good mix here. So I've got a mix uh, of different things for everybody. Hopefully this is interesting to, it's hard to get something for everybody uh, in the room, but I've got a big buffet of information here. Uh, I work at Big Yam. This is the Bob Parsons owned agency. We're right in, uh, we're, we're in Scottsdale, uh, right across from the Scottsdale Harley. And uh, it's a cool facility. It's really great working for Bob Parsons brands. Uh, Mr. Parsons, uh, you know, everybody knows Bob Parsons, right? He's the founder of GoDaddy. Uh, his passion project right now is uh, PXG Golf. I spent a lot of my day working on that site. I'm tired of that logo, so tired of that logo. But uh, anybody have PXG clubs in the room? They're a little, they're a little pricey, right? A little pricey. Uh, but yeah, cool, cool brand. Uh, so I wanna, and incidentally, the PXG isn't on WooCommerce or WordPress, but I am gonna talk WordPress. I'm gonna talk uh, e-commerce specifically. There's a big reason why we're all talking about e-commerce today. Uh, this is the most boring looking slide, it's on a government site, but it estimated quarterly US retail e-commerce sales as percentage of total quarterly. In 2009, I started pulling this chart and I was just curious to see, it was after the recession, I was like, I wonder where this is gonna go and it's cool year after year to watch this just trend right on up. There's no stopping it. Uh, my kids, I have a seven-year-old who buys stuff on Amazon all the time, it drives me crazy. He gets my password, and then and I change the password, and then my wife's like, hey, what's the password? I need to buy something. And then pretty soon my seven-year-old's buying whatever. So it's amazing when these kids are you know, 15, 20 years from now, can you imagine what the opportunity is? I'm telling you, the opportunity right, is right here, right now, for all of us, whether you're building uh, sites for clients, if you're building your own projects, there's a lot of opportunity. Demand is only increasing. I'm going to talk about five main things today. We're going to talk about SEO insights, some tools, plugins, of course, since we're at WordCamp. Uh, I'm going to talk about on-page SEO and also some, some quick wins. Uh, some of the developer wins are, are pretty awesome in my perspective. Uh, some of this is not going to be nearly as technical for you, just to warn you, but, but I'm going to try to get some good information, actionable stuff for everybody here today. Uh, my main passion is entrepreneur. Now, I've had a bunch of roles, uh, director of SEO services at an agency in town, director of marketing. I'm currently SEO manager. I like, I like SEO because it represents, as an entrepreneur, I like to look at it as like, wow, isn't it cool to look at all the search traffic happening around a certain keyword and then thinking about the opportunities that you can create around that keyword, whether that's a service, whether it's a product, SaaS platform, any SaaS folks here building a, yeah, good, cool, cool. Uh, so matching search demand with a product or service is really exciting. Uh, I've worked on some big sites. I'm gonna tell you some stuff I did actually for homedepot.com. I don't know how the agency I was at landed that. It wasn't a big, it wasn't an agency of record thing. It was a small project, side up. Uh, it was like a small spend of like 20K, just like, oh, here, let's try this little thing. I had an opportunity to dig into their product pages. I mean, I'm gonna share some of that stuff. I worked with Infusionsoft, now keep.com, uh, Writer's Digest. Uh, there's a lot of bad information online. So if you go and search, hey, how to do SEO, SEO course, a ton of people are selling like these $1,000 courses. Anybody bought those? No, nobody? Okay. I've, I've been the unfortunate one for years. I've been buying stuff. I, I'll tell you how I learned SEO. I went, I started uh, with a, in 2004, I had a flash site. I went to a developer and, I, and he was like, hey, let me show you something. Control U, look at the source code. Oh, there's nothing here. There's a Swift file and there's no code. There's nothing for Google to look at. And that was when I, I was like, oh, okay, I get this. So then I started building pages. I actually taught myself how to you know, build pages from, you know, just from scratch, HTML. Eventually I got smart. I started doing PSD files and sent them to India. They would convert to HTML. And I started just doing basic, really basic on-page SEO. And I started getting really successful. I started having like products show up. Uh, number one, it, this, no, pre-Penguin, pre-Panda. Very easy, very quick to get you. Yeah, some of you are not in your heads. Did you guys get hit by Penguin or Panda? Oh yeah, yeah. I had to go back to work when, pe when Penguin hit. I had like 25 websites. 
a bunch of them were, number one, I was selling thousands of units uh, per month. And, and then we'll talk about Penguin. Uh, there's so much to talk about. I wish we had more time. But uh, so let's, let's just jump right into this. If I was searching Whirlpool over the range microwave black, that's considered a very long tail search phrase. This is like, this is the opportunity that we have working with e-commerce that's, that's ours to have, that's unique. So if you're all about the content, you're probably more concerned about some of the, like the bigger keywords, and we'll talk about those too, but, but the long tail is where e-commerce can still own this. And, and who, uh, who do you think might show up on the results without looking? Whirlpool, we would hope Whirlpool would show up, right? Home Depot? Somebody looked, Amazon? Yeah, it's always Amazon, it's always, yeah, so let's look at it. So number one, Whirlpool, okay. They deserve that, they created the brand, right? Uh, Home Depot, uh, number two, number three, followed by Lowe's, and then Amazon. So if you've ever looked at the domain authority of Amazon, it's, it's incredible, it's huge, it's such a high, they have so many backlinks, they have so much authority. How come Amazon doesn't own this? Uh, that's, some of the, that's some of the challenge that I took on working on this project. This result, th the basic answer is this result answers all the user intent. If you think about user intent, that's really the key to unlocking opportunity with, with e-commerce SEO. You have to think about like, what's the best result here? What's the best result? If you come, go back here, yeah, we got the star rating. That's encouraging. People, people can easily find a Home Depot. There's a lot of good things going for that. So I worked on this product page, and uh, one thing I did was I, I helped the, uh, the Marcom director, marketing director at the time. I said, hey, here's, I, I spent like two weeks on this site. I found like three things that weren't already optimized. One of those was, uh, was implementing what's called rel canonical. Don't worry if you don't know what that is, but they had like these microwaves, four or five different colors. Each of those pages had the same title tag, essentially, and I said, well, hey, let's, let's make one of these products the primary page via rel canonical. You developers know what that is. Basically, I just told Google, okay, this is the most important one, and that helped that page start ranking. We're gonna talk about uh, fluff today. I kinda like this Breaking Bad theme because just, the other day, they announced Breaking Bad movie, right? Netflix. Uh, I was going to take these slides out, but then they announced it like yesterday, and I was like, "Hey, I'm going to put this back in." Uh, E-commerce and SEO, uh, when it comes to link building, is a challenge. Is anybody here familiar with that term, link building, external link building? Does anybody go out and get links? Oh, good. How many of you have gotten good links from EDUs to e-commerce? Anybody ever got an EDU to an e-commerce? Can I ask you how you did, how you did it? Um, outreach. Actually, I've used your method before. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. We're getting there, yeah. This is on a content site. So this is not e-commerce. This, this is an attorney's site. He set up a scholarship page. I worked with this client. These are domains. Most of those actually still link to this page. These are EDUs. These are, these are phenomenal domain names that have really high authority, lots of trust. SEO is all about trust and relevancy. If you boil it down, trust and relevancy still how it works. How you establish relevancy is through your on-page content. Your trust is through these domains. Uh, <laughs> we're going to come back to that. Uh, this works for e-commerce. I've done this. So I had a client. He was getting ready to bail. He was upset with the agency's delivery. of. I didn't build these links for him. And I, I was basically uh, asked to join the call to see if I could recover this account. This guy was going to go away. I said, hey, look, you get okay. It's like you guys have not been looking at the opportunity here. I said, why don't we build a scholarship page for you? And uh, this is what this is what the result was. They created a a fair trade scholarship program. Makes sense for them. Actually, got these domains to point to a T site. That's that's e-commerce, right? Typically, if you ask a school to link to your product stuff, they're like, well, no, this is commercial. So why would they link to that? It's because you have something of value to link to. And that's, that's the opportunity here. So this still works. Uh, I, I, just, uh, I just went through, I was, I was scoping this out for a client. I found 580 referring EDUs pointing to a site that, and about 
a third of those are ones that I would reach out to. It's very effective. Uh, now, by the way, you have to have a real scholarship. Some of you guys are thinking, oh, I'll just put this content on my site and don't do that. <laughs> no, no, you don't want to do that. And, and I think since I told people about this, phoenix.edu shut off their public-facing page. They made it an internal thing. So this is, it's going to happen eventually. It'll all be internal. Uh, let's talk about, we're gonna, I'm going to have to jam right through these slides to make sure we get through them. Uh, there's a lot of fluff that tends to happen with e-commerce. What I mean by fluff, uh, we talked in a different context than, we mentioned, than I mentioned it before. There's a lot of pages in e-commerce that tend to fill up Google's search index. If you go to a tool like Screaming Frog, uh, Screaming Frog is, is pretty handy because you can quickly find fluff on your website. And this one on the left is duplicate titles. So this is a particular site. Crawl the site. It'll tell you if, if you've got like uh, title tags. Now, why that's important is because the best way to establish relevancy with Google is through your title tag. The title tag is the single most important thing you could edit. If you did nothing else today other than just fix your title tag, make sure they're unique and not uh, generic out of the box or whatever, or ha like sometimes your brand name is like occupying two thirds of your title tag and it includes like your, I almost said spam, but your keyword, you wanna make sure that your title tags are unique. Screaming Frog is a great tool and I've got a link to the resources uh, at the end of this presentation. This is a good illustration of what your website should not look like. If you have a website, if you have an e-commerce website, it's very easy to accidentally have, have pages like this. So if each person here represents a page on your site and you're a search engine, how easy is it for you to find the guy in a hat? It's, it's hard, right? Well, it's a black and white photo. Everybody here has a hat on. Uh, it's, they're not distinguishable. This is what many websites look like, uh, especially on WordPress. We'll talk about tag pages. Uh, what your site should look like is this. And what I mean by this is every page on the site, every subcategory page, every product page, every primary, uh, even uh, we're not talking about blog content, every page should have a very distinct focus. And what I mean by this is if, if, I, if this was a web page, this person would be the, the girl with the white uh, driver hat, you know, there's some distinction about that person. Inside Google Search Console, uh, so we're talking about this, this tool set here. Uh, some of the fluff comes unintentionally. This will be more meaningful, I think, for you developers. If you have a large e-commerce site, make sure you go to Search Console and then categorize your search parameters. Has, uh, search parameters are like if you have products that are, uh, could be classified as blue, right? Or if you sort by price, or if you have different parameters that's useful for users to get to certain products on your site, go into Search Console and just look at that and make sure that you categorize those. So in other words, that one on the left here, this top left one, is basically fluff. Google, interestingly, doesn't easily distinguish between your content. You have to tell them through different means. So in this case, we're telling it right directly through Search Console. Uh, if you hop into the screen, you're basically going to say, hey, don't crawl any of these pages, any of these parameters, and that's a quick way to clean up some of that fluff. You will see a movement, positive movement, if you clean up the unintentional duplicate content. I mentioned rel canonical earlier. Rel canonical is really great signal. It's a really strong directive. So search engines are basically looking for things to tell it. So Googlebot specifically said, is looking for some identifier. Rel canonical, you, with rel canonical, you can tell it that, uh, okay, there's only one version of this that should uh, rank and be found. For example, if you have paginated content, uh, does anybody here have a product site with more than like 10 pages? If you go to the bottom and there's like a number, hit next, next, next. So if you've got 10 products on a specific page, you want to make sure your rel canonical is implemented. That will help Google understand that, okay, there's just the first page is important. And uh, uh, another SEO tool, Google PageSpeed Insights. Definitely want to check out PageSpeed Insights. This is a free tool. It gives you some great insights into like what Google thinks about your page speed. Page speed is becoming increasingly important. Uh, some developers I've worked with have spent so much time just working on page speed because it's ultimately user experience, right? 
Uh, webpagetest.org. I'm not a developer, but I love using webpagetest.org. You can get these really nice, uh, you can get a quick view of a waterfall diagram. This uh, is something that I like to look at. What it is, basically, this is web page test, waterfall diagram. There's a lot of crap here, lots and lots of different elements that have to load, uh, lots of JS files. The goal is to shrink the vertical and the horizontal. If that's your web page, that's going to load very, very slow. Let's talk about plugins real quick. Uh, is anybody not using Yoast here? No? Yoast? Who has, who, who's an all-in-one all SEO fan? I, I like all-in-one SEO. Yoast, has anybody, has anybody not heard of Yoast? It's okay to raise your hand. Yoast is a great plugin that makes it easy. Actually, there's a, there's a booth out here, isn't there? Does anybody hear from Yoast? They got some pins out here. Uh, Yoast is actually, uh, he, he, it's a really great plugin that you can basically use to help inform decisions in terms of like page focus. There's some problems with Yoast because it has, uh, for you developers, it has self-referencing rel, uh, rel canonical right out of the box. There's a way to change that. I've seen like in the case of pagination where you have page three, Rails will say, oh yep, rel canonical page three. Oh, rel canonical page four, rel canonical page five. If that makes sense to you, that's a problem. You wanna make sure that just page one is rel canonical. Uh, but it is handy for uh, quickly assessing on-page uh, keyword focus goals. In Yoast, you want to go to the taxonomies button. Make sure that you know index uh, tags. Tags are handy for your users. It's great to have tags, right? You can search content on your site. But this gets unintentionally indexed. It, it just creates more fluff. Uh, same with, uh, I like doing archive pages. Uh, this is just trimming off the fluff, right? Trimming off the fat. Here's the rel canonical uh, opportunity that I wanted to point out earlier. So page one, page two, page three, page four, all of these pages have a title tag that says men's running shoes. That's a problem for Google because Google doesn't know which one's the most important one. You gotta implement rel canonical. Here is that, here is that, that uh, edit you can make in functions, PHP for Yoast, I, I always work with developers, by the way. I never do this myself. Every time I go in here, I break the site. I don't know, <laughs> is that you too? I, I, you can go in here into Yoast and you can, in your functions PHP, you can add, you can add that. There's documentation on it, but you can get, disable that self-referencing real canonical. W3 total cache is a quick and dirty method to speed up elements. Now, you developers, I know you guys are Speed snobs, is that a nice way to say it? Just kidding, now, I've worked with developers and you guys are so much smarter than that. You can do like all kinds of crazy stuff. I, I always have to rely on just the W3 total cache. I like to use um, smush image compression, uh, keeping images light. Okay, I wanna talk about some of this on-page SEO. For, for some of you folks that might just be like, what the crap is he talking about? It's okay if you're lost. Uh, the single most important thing you can do on your site is to make sure your title tags are, 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 uh, are keyword relevant. And this is, a, this is writersdigest.com. I grew the traffic on the site tremendously simply by going through and, and spending time with the editors and saying, okay, title tag focus. I, I created a document and said, okay, this, we need to follow a, a strategy for all these pages I started adding sub I started adding category descriptions on a lot of the pages. Uh, make sure in your settings that you're using post name so that you have that SEO friendly URL. This is applicable for, for e-commerce as well. Uh, so even though this is not a commerce page, I wanted to share the, the ideal site structure. Categorization is really, really important. Have you guys ever heard of the myth uh, uh, flat architecture is absolutely the best for SEO. Have you guys heard that? Yeah. Uh, I, I worked with Meritage Homes. Meritage Homes there in Scottsdale. They have like so many uh, developments, so many places that there's no way you can keep that site in like three tiers. Like you can't keep three subdirectories on that site. It's like seven or eight or nine. I'll, I'll tell you, there are many, many pages on that site ranked number one in Google for their target intended keyword 
I'm talking like uh, very geo-specific terms that are like five subdirectories deep. Okay, so so this is a this is showing like a a a, uh, a very flat architecture. What I mean by flat is you don't want to have your homepage and then everything else on the homepage. You want to have you want to categorize. So with e-commerce, it's more natural. With e-commerce, it's like it's like oh yeah, I sell uh, I sell shoes and then I sell uh, all these other subcategories. Uh, I want to tell you a quick story real fast. Images are really, really important for e-commerce. I've seen this uh, uh, go very badly, and I've seen it go really well. This is a, this is a guy named Brian Clemps. He's the, he's the senior editor at FW Media, writersdigest.com. He was like scraping images off of like Wikipedia. He would never put in his own images. He would just copy hot links sometimes, just copy the exact image file, and he always ranked like number four. He would post something. He had a, a ton of social following. He was uh, well known in the community. For some reason, he would not rank above position four or five. And then one day, I was like, "Oh, he's 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 exact copying images." I said, "Hey, Brian, let's let's experiment on this. Let's spend a couple of weeks. Let's rename each file name to a keyword, and then change the images, make it a little unique. You know, shrink it a little bit. You should use your own uh, uh, unique images, right? Alt text, and then instantly, within a couple of weeks." All of his posts started showing up number one. So there was one thing tripping his, his ability to rank high. Uh, H1 is always important, but I think people overemphasize it. Uh, it is, it's all ultimately about relevancy. You want to make sure your title tag has something from a user query standpoint. If somebody's searching for your product and they see that result in search results, they click on it. You want to think, well, what, what do they expect to see on the page? That's the most important function of your H1 tag. Just make sure that that matches their intent. Uh, I want to give you a quick little strategy on where I start any SEO project. Wish I had time to like go into PXG right now and uh, on the site and and do some experimentation. Maybe we, maybe we'll have a minute to do that. Uh, if I'm looking at a new keyword and I want to rank something on PXG.com for uh, on page one, I always go to the page two. So this is from SEMrush, export your CSV file. You can get all your rankings. You can get all the, the URLs that are ranking for a specific keyword. Filter by position 20 or fewer. And then I always start here. And this example is writersdigest.com, but I absolutely do this on PXG every day. I look for the keywords that are page two because those are the ones that I can most likely influence. I don't start with page 10 or page eight, or whatever. I look for the ones that are like kind of hovering there. And uh, actually, let me show you something real fast. Yeah, let me, let me hop on over to uh, PXG real fast. Hope Bob Parsons doesn't care. Just kidding. No. All right, so I'm logged into the CMS. So I want to show you something real fast. Uh, all right, so I already pulled this up. So I'm looking at like uh, keywords that that are are gaining momentum. Now I've been working on this keyword. You see that nice little keyword? I've been working on that one for weeks and weeks. All right. So TaylorMade, it's good, right? Uh, so this thing was like page seven, position like 80 something when I started chewing on it. And I would like to see if you can spot some of the things that might be contributing. This is Sneaky Big Studios. Let me close that. So this is this is the page that ranks. And now it's on top of page two. This is a really this is a really good keyword. I hope we can get to number one. Um, I'll quickly just show you a couple of things. Anything? Anybody spot anything that, that's helping this rank well for golf clubs? Title tag. title tag number one. Yep. Thank you. Golf clubs. That's the first keyword. It has to be at the very beginning of the title. Okay. That's important. Yep. Uh, anything else? You'll notice I don't have it in my H1. They won't let me yet. Uh, I went through here, and if you just do a quick Control F, I have to make sure that this says golf club somewhere. It's very light. This is not ideal if you want to rank quickly. So I'm working on the content teams. We're eventually getting these fleshed out a little bit more. Uh, let's take a peek at Ahrefs. Anybody here a fan of Ahrefs? Oh yeah, it's, isn't it, it's your go-to? Good. Ahrefs, if you haven't used this already, really good tool, you can just basically peek at the backlinks of any site. So 
earlier I showed you Whirlpool, Home Depot, Lowe's, and, um, and I, I would just stress, when you're doing SEO for your e-commerce client, for your own site, realize that SEO is a page level game. You don't give up just because Amazon has a huge domain authority. Don't think that you can't rank for it, because you absolutely can. And, I, and I've done it many times, even post Penguin and Panda. Uh, if I go here, I'm gonna go exact URL, and I'm just gonna show you something. I've got 33 domain names pointing to this page now. And this, this domain, the reason this is moving up is because of these backlinks. Also, here's another quick uh, site search command you can do. Uh, hope all of you are using like search operators. Search operators are basically peek at Google and see what Google has indexed for your site. You can go in here and say, okay, site colon pxc.com in text golf clubs. I'm going to do this. All right, so I'm basically looking at pxg.com. There's a bunch of translated pages, so it's filling up the index. But what I do is I go in here and I, and I start to, uh, once I know what keyword I wanna go after, I look at the profile, the backlinks, I look and see what competitors are there, and I, and I look at, and I quantify it. It's important to quantify it. Say, okay, okay, Amazon's crappy page has 15 links. Let me go get 30, right? I've, I've learned over and over and over that you can do this consistently. You can always beat out uh, Amazon. Right here, if you click on this Irons page, for example, this is a, a, the, the last major implementation uh, that I wanted to stress. It's really, really important that you have internal links. So internal links, how many people are doing that regularly? A few of you? Good. If, and if you don't know what that is, it's basically you got to make sure that Again, realizing that Google gets confused, make sure that you tell Google which page is the most important page for clubs. As you can imagine, the whole site is about golf clubs. So like every page talks about golf clubs. How do I get that page, to, uh, how do I get the golf clubs page to rank? And that's the way you do it. You basically say, okay, there's, an this, there's another page that's about golf clubs, that's this one. So those internal links are critically important. So get your off page, you got your off page links, your external links, they won't let me do a scholarship on this site, by the way. <laughs> I've already went there first, and uh, but but um, but they do have. There is one EDU pointing to it, but anyway. But but this site, I mean, there's pro players. There's a lot of buzz around this brand, so I'm not really stressed about it. If you are a small e-commerce site and you're going up against the big sites, I would strongly suggest you find a link building mechanism. What I mean by that is find something like a scholarship page that you can uh, administer. And, and get links to. They're super easy. I can actually show you um, half a dozen sites right now. If you come up to me afterwards, I'll show you a couple sites that have scholarships that have like 20, 30 EDUs pointing to them. And, uh, and that's a really big driver. So I think we've got 10 minutes left. And I think we're, let me just peek at this real fast. I've got a, quite a few more slides, but I think I'll just go ahead and open it up for questions. Just trying to get a sense of what you might be interested in. Does anybody have any nitty gritty? Yes, in the back. Sure. The question is social media and the importance of ranking. So a couple, few years ago, uh, a couple folks, John Mueller, uh, Matt Cutts used to be the director of web spam at Google. They used to talk a lot about social and the, the it, it, Today, the, the answer is there's so much data that they have not figured out. Even Dwayne Forrester, he's the, he was like the Matt Cutts of, of uh, Bing for a while. And I've had conversations with him on LinkedIn. He said there's so much data, they can't yet, uh, they can't yet uh, assign it certain algorithmic directives. Right? That was his words, roughly. And however, it is a signal of engagement, right? Uh, I would say the single most important um, thing that we should think about in this room is getting referral traffic. Is, does anybody here use Pinterest as a referral mechanism for your site? Yes. I, you know, uh, if anybody here shops on Etsy, sells on Etsy, 
uh, Etsy.com is one of those sites where they have pretty crappy SEO in their categories. Uh, Rand Fishkins called them out on it. I've, I've tweeted the director of SEO there, and, and, and I don't get responses. But, I've, but, but that site does extremely well. It's growing like crazy. The reason is because they got that pin it button on all their images. They got massive amounts of traffic, real people who actually have consumer intent going to the site. So I would say the single most important social is actual customers with actual intent. And I, I hope that's not a cop out, but I have I've found contractors on Fiverr to go out and build pins to products that I have for sale on Etsy. Like, you know, 20, 30 bucks, you can get a contractor to go and pin stuff for you. And that's made a huge difference. Actual sales, not, not ranking or anything, just people that are buying stuff. So, uh, yeah, anybody else? Oh, there was another hand right here first, and then you. Yes. They're so picky. Oh my gosh, at PXT, I sit next to the uh, account managers, and like everything I say is like, and it's a no. Hey, can I do this? Nope. Can I do this? Nope. So I hired a golfer. He's starting in a couple weeks. This golfer is sitting right next to me, and I'm going to have him just pound these guys with questions. Hey, let's do this content. Let's do this content. And he's and he's going to help me out a lot because I'm not a golfer and I can't like make the case. But but the correlation. The question is the correlation between the H1 and the and the title tag. I mean. It's definitely important. It's really an important signal. Again, it's about relevancy. So it's trust and relevancy. The title tag, if it matches it, and you'll notice that I have at least, I, what I did is uh, in my title tag, for a while I was kind of spamming this title. I was sticking like lots of other keywords in here in the title tag. But eventually I just said, you know what? It says engineered for performance. That's not a keyword I want to rank for, but it's relevant for the search query. So what I did is I added it back to the title tag. So I had golf clubs, irons, you know, hybrids, drivers. I took that out and I put golf clubs engineered for performance because it's relevant. So if the user sees it in search, they go to the page, that's what I was looking for. That's what I saw, that's what I clicked on, that's what I, that helped it get up like six spots, just that, that little thing. So if that helps, it'd be nice to have the keyword, but eventually we'll get there. I think, I think in a few more months, I'll be number one for golf clubs. But there was another quick question over here. Oh, can I say? How can you, or what is it? Can you talk about Shopify and also what your opinion is on the SEO for WordPress? Yeah, question, great question. WordPress versus Shopify, which one out of the box? I will say this. Don't use the most popular theme. That's a, has anybody in, installed Flatsum for WooCommerce? It's like the number one most popular uh, theme. We got about five minutes left. Uh, I don't have a specific recommendation, but both of them are great. I've had clients, big clients like Mission.com. I've worked with those guys. They are on Shopify. And I, I used to look at it like, oh, well, why, were they, why aren't they doing some custom? Well, I could get that page to rank. I can get any site to rank as long as you can, as long as you can control external links, which you can do on any site, and as long as you can control title tags, as long as you can control, but I will say, don't go after the most popular theme available. Like if, uh, if you go to like Theme Forest or whatever, you install like the number one most popular theme, uh, 100,000 themes, e everybody's code looks the same. And I'm a big believer of, I used to rank really well, I still do, by building fresh pages, fresh code, nobody else has it. And I'm a big believer in that still. If if you can't influence other factors. So, hope that, I don't know if you had a question up here, and then back. Um, do internal links have more or less value based on where they're located in the site structure? Yes, I always try to put them up towards the top. Sometimes I don't have control of it, like PXG, they're really picky, but sometimes I, I sneak it in there, but. So the deeper it's nested into a website, the less value it has? I've tried both. I've never measured any significant change. I, sometimes I don't have control over it, but I usually try to put it towards the top. I've always been a believer that it does influence it, and I can't tell you that I've had enough tests to say, yep, definitively. And, and one, of my, one of my approaches to SEO is test something incrementally and just see how the site reacts to it. Because there's so many other things that are influencing it. You, at, at one, one mistake that a lot of SEOs do is they, they, they try to be extreme and site-wide everything. No, you just See how that one site will, re will totally react different than another site. 
And that's one of those cases where if, if you've already done everything else, you got your backlinks, you can try moving the link up. And you had a question there too? Oh, don't you hate that? I hate the web in 2019. It sucks. Oh, we got GDPR. Oh, we got cookies. Oh, yeah.